Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Um, maybe you could just set the scene for us. Obviously, there's going to be plenty of fans who are very familiar with the Hunger Games world. Um, but where do we find ourselves? We've gone back 64 years um, in, in this new film. Um, well, you know, this film opens and sort of shows a part of Panem we haven't ever seen. Um, it actually opens with, you know, a flashback to a young Coriolanus Snow as a boy, and you're seeing the capital during wartime, which is something we talk about in the earlier movies, you know, sort of like the Clone Wars, um, you know, the dark days, but we haven't ever seen them. So we have a little, uh, just a little introduction that gives you an idea of the circumstances in which Snow and his cousin Tigress are growing up. And then you fast forward to him at 18, at the, he's, you know, studying at the academy, which is sort of for all of these elite kids, passing himself off as still affluent when, in fact, his family has fallen on very hard times and all of it relies on him sort of winning the day and emerging at the top of his class in order to secure his family's future. So, and in, and at that point, Point, they get this curveball, which is that your future and your, uh, you know, outcome from finishing all these years of study is going to come down to this new idea, who can be the best mentor to the triplets, which is a, comes as a real shock, um, hasn't ever been done before, but they're challenged to get people to want to watch the games, because after 10 years of this brutality, I think the citizens are failing to find the entertainment in this horrible violence and it's up to these kids to try to figure out how to engage people and get them to watch and um, and he gets assigned a very scrawny but very compelling young woman from District 12. And obviously the whole Hunger Games, you know, mythology is so rich um, and there's so many thematic uh, things that can come out of it, both from the original trilogy, but then when you saw that Suzanne Collins was going to go back and write this prequel, um, that must have felt so exciting and it obviously opened up a whole other area that you could explore on screen. And um, So what do you think the allure was of going back and perhaps where they were looking at the impacts of, of war? This is kind of looking at the state of nature and this kind of fight between good and evil that plays out with the young Jon Snow? Well, that, you know, I, that's what I was so excited about was that, you know, Suzanne, um, in the same way that Lucy Gray says, you know, I don't sing when I'm told to, I sing when I have something to say. That's Suzanne. And so she doesn't just, like, crank out a book to crank out a book. And she wanted to explore very different ideas in this one. So thematically, as you've pointed out, this one is much more about, you know, are we fundamentally good or are we bad? And if you believe that we are bad and that we will inherently destroy each other, you long for a more authoritarian government, someone to keep us in check, that your government should keep people in place so that they won't destroy you. If you're more of, an, of a person who sees the good and believes that people are fundamentally good, you want a government that protects their rights, their individuality, their liberties. And different characters are pulling snow in different directions over the course of the story. And it felt like a obviously very timely. Democracy around the world is challenged right now. People are going to the polls and deciding what they want and to explore sort of how personal those choices are and how political the personal can become was a real opportunity for us, especially in seeing how a young Coriolanus Snow emerges from this boy into the man we know. And what an incredible cast. I mean, but right at the center of it, Tom Blythe and, uh, and and Rachel Zegler. And I think that they just perfectly capture all the nuance and this push-pull constantly between the two of them, within themselves, of, you know, which way they sh sh should go. You know, how did you bring this cast together and what was it like seeing them bring their story to life? Um, you know, we, uh, this was a very hard, these were very hard roles to cast. The demands um, for the leads are enormous. Really, all of these young leads have, enormous demands on them for you know for snow he is neither villain nor hero at this moment and both villain and hero at this moment and it is about that tension and the nuance and to be able to capture that complexity um you know tom has just incredible uh control over his craft he has that composure that feels reminiscent of Don, uh, of Donald Sutherland, but not impersonating Donald Sutherland. And he, he 
he knocked our socks off. He came in, he stole the role. Um, and then with, with Rachel, you have, as you say, she's a complex character. There's a lot of give and take between these two characters. I hope audiences will actually have different ideas about are they in love, are they not in love? Is it real, is it not real? When does it feel real, when does it not feel real? It's, especially because they meet in a performance. They connect through performance, realizing that they both sort of have this ability to wear these masks and to put them to service for survival, which they both are very familiar with. And so uh, Rachel, you know, the role demands a lot of her as an actor, and it, but then also the person has to have this amazing voice and this ability to get on stage and perform in a way that makes you feel like you're the only person in the audience. And Rachel was sort of uniquely suited to that. Um, and uh, we really got lucky with our, both our young cast and their sort of incredible gifts and also great, great people. You know, we had no bad apples. And then our adult cast, you know, which are some of the people I've admired my whole career. I'm out of time, unfortunately, but thank you so much for sharing all that with me and I can't wait for everyone else to see the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Thanks so much. Thank you.